Hey everybody, this is Aaron with GeoAce uh, here for another QGIS in the field tutorial. So this is going to be a pretty quick tutorial and we're going to cover drop downs today. And I'm going to show you three different ways on how to actually implement them. Um, all of them are going to be pretty straightforward and simple. So let's hop right into it. Okay, we have our QGIS project open, the one that we've been using. Today what we're going to do is we're going to uh, implement a drop down for plant species in our plants layer. So all we really need to do is uh, start by going to properties per the usual attributes form and go to species and within species uh, we're going to be going over to the widget type and then scrolling over to down to value map uh, QGIS calls it value map for some reason I'm not sure but uh, we'll go with it and um, we're just gonna, I'm going to put the Latin name for the value and then the common name for the description. And I'm going to just do it twice, just for example purposes. And so, as you could probably guess, this first method is the simplest. It's just basically a uh, manual. You're just typing in what values you want to put in and for the user to choose from. And uh, notice that I have the not null constraint and the enforce not null constraint check. That means that we're going to make this required for any users who um, are going to add a feature. If you go to edit this, um, or if you try to add a feature here, you'll see this is kind of oranged out because it's required now, and you have your red maple and your hackberry. Perfect. OK. Now for method number two, it's going to be just as easy. Uh, we're going to produce the dropdown using a CSV file. So just to give you an idea of what the CSV file looks like, on the left you have the uh, Latin name or the value, and on the right you have the description. And the one thing to note is that we have no headers here. So um, if you have like, you know, hundreds of things to choose from, please don't use a drop down. At that point, um, you should be using an autofill or something. But uh, for instances where you have more than what you want to type, but uh, less than what's going to completely overload a user, uh, you know, CSV is perfect. I'm going to drop, jump off my soapbox now and just show you how to do it. But uh, you go to properties, you go to species, and you load data from CSV. Uh, downloads here, I have the spreadsheet here. And now you can see, let me ex dra drag this over here, that we have a full um, value map based on our CSV files. And just to show you, we're going to add another feature. And you can now see all five options. All right. And uh, method number three is what the one that I think is the coolest. And uh, Basically, you can take the values, the unique values in a different layer, and you can actually populate them with your dropdown, or uh, I think even the same layer if you wanted to. Um, so in order to do that, if you haven't guessed it already, all you have to do is go to load data from layer, then uh, pick the layer that you want to use. Now, this makes zero sense in this particular use case. I'm just using this secondary layer just to show you. but. Uh, you can see now that from our zones layer, we're actually pulling the values that are given in that particular label field. So um, I, this should work. It always has. But uh, just to show you here, now we have planting zone and Walnut Ridge Park. OK, cool. So before we uh, sync this to a Q field, I'm going to go ahead and sync this back to the CSV because it actually makes sense. And then I will see you in the iPhone. All right, so we have our uh, Q field mobile application up and running now. Uh, again, if you need help getting up to this point, just uh, I'm going to refer you to tutorial one. But uh, I have synced up my field ops uh, project that we've been working off of. And now all, you, all that's left to do is really just to go in and make sure that your edit is on and then you can add a feature. And um, you can see there uh, automatically a good sign. Our bar is red showing that there's a required field that we need to fill out. And um, 
you click on the species, which is what we just worked off of, and I have my one, two, three, four, five. Uh, one thing to note is that you can see that the description is what's visible and not the actual value. So I put in Latin name for the value. I put the description being the common name, thinking that that's what people would want. And that's what we got here. So we'll just put silver ma or sugar maple here. I don't care. Let's put a max height of 61 and we'll call it good. And there you have it. All right. Well, thanks for watching this tutorial. Um, please like and subscribe if this has been helpful for you. And uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks. See ya.